So here's part two of how to solve a radical inequality. And on this one, we have the same exact steps, but it's a little bit more fun because we are going to uh, look at one that has two radicals in it instead of one, but we're going to use the same steps. So if we look at number 13 from our worksheet, uh, this will help us out. Um, how do you solve this thing? Well, you simply square both sides, right? And when you square both sides, you end up with uh, x plus 7 greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. And then after that, you solve for x. So that's really easy. You could either move the uh, 2x, subtract 2x and move it this way, or you could subtract x and move it that way. Whatever you want. What do you want to do? Oh, you want to move x. All right, let's move x. So let's subtract x. Subtract x. Might as well do two steps in one. And I'm going to add 1 and add 1 so I could get to my final answer. The uh, x take away x cancels. The uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. The inequality stays the same because we didn't multiply or divide by a negative. On the right side, uh, the 2x take away x, it's going to be a single x, 1x or just x. And then the uh, 1 and negative 1 cancel out. So here's my answer. x is greater than or equal to... I mean, 8 is greater than or equal to x, but we know we don't want 8 being greater than or equal to x. Let's write it the, the right way. x is less than or equal to 8. Now, you might be thinking, wait, why did you flip the symbol? Again, I didn't flip anything. The truth is I flipped the whole thing, right? Uh, when you compare the x and the 8, it's opening up to the 8. So on your final answer, it has to remain the same, that it has to open up to the 8. So that's why it looks like it flipped. I actually flipped the whole thing. Anyway, so that's my answer. So when you think about that, when you think about the number line, say here's 8, okay? And when you say less than or equal to 8, it's that way. Now, it's that way forever, right? So you're talking about that eventually it's going to end up being 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1,000, negative 50. If you keep going this way, it's going to be negatives negative numbers, and we know that we can't have negative values in here, okay? You can't have any negatives. The bottom line is this inside value, the radicand value, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And because of that fact, that it has to be greater than or equal to zero, we're actually going to write that x plus 7 has to be greater than or equal to zero. That way it won't be negative. And if you solve this thing, it's going to give you x is greater than or equal to negative 7. And that's kind of like an answer, but it's really going to give us our limitation to what our real answer is going to be, where it has to stop, right? And in this case, it's saying stop at negative 7. But step two on this thing says that you set your radicand values, all of them, set all your radicand values to be greater than or equal to zero and solve them and then place them on the same number line. So we haven't done all of them. We've only done one of them. We did this radicand value. We set it to be greater than or equal to zero and we solved it and we got this answer. Let me uh, graph the uh, negative seven, x being greater than or equal to negative seven. So here's negative seven, and greater than or equal to is that way, okay? So we have a double overlap so far, but we also need to do it to the other radicand value. And the other radicand value is um, two x minus one, it has to be greater than or equal to zero also which means that if you add 1 to both sides, you'll have 2x is greater than or equal to 1, which means that if you divide by 2 and divide by 2, you're going to get your answer x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Now, if you think about that answer, that x is greater than or equal to 1 half, you need to go back to the number line. So let's pretend that 0 is right here in the middle. That means that 1 half is right here, 1 half. And what is this saying? It's saying x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So greater than is to the right. Okay, so if you look at this mess of a number line, where is the area with most overlaps? Well, right here you have a black one and a red one. That's two lines. Right here you have that black one, that red one, and that other black one up there. Maybe I should have done uh, the inequality of x is greater than 1 half with a different color like green. Okay, so now we have a black, a red, and a green line, and it's very clear that in this area you have all three, the black, the red, and the green. 
So this is the triple overlap piece. So your compound inequality um, is uh, the one half and the eight with the x in the middle. So if I wanted to write my final answer, I would have to write the one half on the left side, the eight on the right side, the x in the middle, and then simply put your inequality symbols right there and there's your compound inequality. That's your answer right there. I hope this helps. Now, don't freak out. There's only gonna be at most three of these guys on the test, but then again, there's only like 18 questions, 17 questions, so you definitely don't wanna skip these. Do your best. And again, if all else fails, you should be able to, at the very least, get the answer, x is less than or equal to eight, and you'll at least get half credit for that. But doing the number line will get you the full credit by getting that extra piece if it's needed. Man, I hope this helps.